So here I am back again talking about ohms. So I just want to give you guys another example of why it's so important to use such a simple tool like this, 25 bucks at Ewing. Really simple and this is going to save you so much time. So I turned up to this house, it's obviously an old controller, 2008. It's an old system, you've got your single strand wires. I did a multimeter test and when I tested all my ohms, I had three zones showing infinity zone four which they already knew about and then zone seven and eight also showed infinity i'm not too worried about those because they're in an area where there's a lot of interference so i'm saving that for the end because that could be a difficult um, task to find those valves but zone three was showing an ohms reading of 50. And I thought, okay, I've never seen the valves. They might be Toro valves or they might be an old Rainbird valve. You never know. But when I fired up zone three, nothing happened. So I was like, hmm, let's uh, investigate. We managed to find the valve and it was a Hunter valve. I was like, okay, let's, let's do a little bit more investigating because I thought originally zone four was actually that valve and it kept showing infinity. And then I went ahead and I used this guy trace the wire and I was thinking it was going to be this wire but it wasn't it was actually zone 3 that it was connected to now as you can see here with the multimeter it's hooked up directly to a hunter solenoid I'm getting around 21 ohms so I know that that is should be that should be what I'm looking for when I do my ohms test at the controller however when I do my ohms test at the controller I'm actually getting 50 ohms now to take this uh, test one step further, I'm going to fire up zone 3, which is the troublesome zone, and then you can see it's firing from the controller, and I know I'm getting the right voltage. As you can see here, I'm testing the voltage, and I've got 25 volts, which is more than enough to turn on that solenoid. And now here I am at the valve with my helper. Hey, buddy. Hey, friend. Yeah, move. Yeah, I know, you scared me too. This solenoid, I'm putting my finger on it, I can actually feel it vibrating, but nothing's happening. And just to show you this zone does actually work, but you're gonna have to move. Sorry, got the cat out of the way. Just to show you this zone does actually work and I can feel it vibrating here. If I turn it on manually, there it goes. But I'm getting nothing. So what could it be? It should be 23, 22 ohms. Instead, we've got over 50. We've got a grounded wire, which means that our voltage, when it actually reaches here, instead of getting that 25 volts, we're probably getting less than 25. We're probably getting, I don't know, maybe 10 volts. So now we've established that it's a uh, grounded wire. We're now just gonna see how much voltage actually makes it to the valve. It should have 21 ohms at the controller. Instead of the controller, we're getting 50. Um, over here at the solenoid, we're getting the right um, ohms reading. But let's go ahead and we'll fire up zone three. And you'll hear the valve actually turn on, but nothing happens. I've already got my red lead hooked up to one of them. Let's see what reading we get on the multimeter. There it is. We're barely getting over 10 volts and all because we have a grounded wire. Again, somebody else could have been out here trying to figure out what was wrong with the system. They could have rebuilt this valve, they could have cut it out, they could have tried everything in the playbook to try and get it working. But there's nothing wrong with the system. It's wiring. The wiring needs to be redone because you're not going to find a grounded wire, especially when you've got so much hardscape and so many plants to deal with. So, easy time saver.